My mother was a teacher. Uh, I bet, I bet uh, some of my students hate that my mother was a teacher because that's probably the reason why I'm here uh, and uh, why I'm at ESCP. Um, I grew up in a, in a small town um, close to Cologne in, in Germany and my mother was teaching English to uh, elderly women um, in the afternoons. And um, these people tried to learn English because um, they had friends in England or in an English-speaking country, they liked to travel, they had relatives, uh, they had kids, maybe grandkids uh, that they want to connect to, and my mother was teaching them English. And um, I grew up, uh, and every morning uh, when I had breakfast in the kitchen, I was exposed uh, to this postcard. Um, and um, gladly, uh, I was not attached to the design and became a designer. Um, <laughs> but but I, I, was really, I was really touched by this postcard um, for two reasons. The first reason is, of course, what it says, what the postcard says. And um, I, I got the feeling that the students who gave the postcard to my mother really were touched by my mother. My mother reached out to them and my mother helped them to accomplish something, um, to accomplish speaking English, to accomplish feeling well about themselves uh, in speaking English. Uh, and the second thing why uh, I was touched by this postcard is um, because I could see how my mother felt. And she was so proud. I mean, <laughs> that's why she hung up this postcard and it's still hanging uh, in, in our kitchen. Um, actually, while preparing for the talk, I just called my father and said, can you please take a picture of this postcard? <laughs> and he said, you mean this ugly postcard? <laughs> you always hate it? Yes, I, yes, I need this postcard. And it's still hanging there. Uh, and he sent me the picture. Um, so I think I wasn't, I wasn't too clear about this at that time. I was seven, eight, nine, I don't know. So I went to school, I went to high school. I went to university, I did my PhD, I ended up being a research assistant. Uh, and suddenly, as a research assistant, you start to teach. Um, and I was standing there in front of students, and I thought, this is not what this postcard was all about. <laughs> <laughs> this does not feel the same. I mean, first of all, I did never get postcards from my students. <laughs> um, clear sign. But, uh, <laughs> well, you all have the chance to write me one later. Huh? <laughs> Um, so, so I realized nobody really told me how to teach. I, mean, I, I was an expert in my field. Um, right now I was introduced as an expert in teaching. That's funny sometimes how you get an expert. But, um, but I was an expert in my field, which was strategy and innovation, but I was not an expert in teaching. And um, so I thought, okay, if nobody told me how to do it, I have to do it myself. Um, so read up on things, huh? and you are amazed on how many books there are on um, teaching. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Books, articles, conferences. I went to Harvard, uh, participant-centered learning. I took place in a, in a program. Um, but I, I was just not getting a lot out of this. And it was only when I came across this lady, we already heard about her on, on two, uh, two uh, events, that I really thought maybe that was the wrong question. Because the question I had was how to become a great teacher. Maybe that's the wrong question. And I looked at her, and with her fame, people were writing about her, and they were saying, Lady Gaga is the modern leader. Well, conventional wisdom will tell you leadership creates followers. I think it's exactly the other way around. Followers create leaders. Huh? You engage in a dialogue. You create an atmosphere where things can happen. And this is exactly what I realized. The question was wrong. It's not about how to become a great teacher. It's about how to create a learning experience where things can happen where mutual exchange happens and where new ideas are born. Um, but when we talk about a learning experience, then the teacher is only one part, right? It's about students.
and they outnumber the teacher by far. So I thought about what is it that students have to bring? Oh, I loved this question because it took a, a lot of pressure from me. Huh? <laughs> you turn around and say, no, it's you. The students have to do something. So I looked and I started to take notes after class. And I went through my notes and I looked which classes went really well, at least in my opinion, um, and which classes went so okay, and of course they were awful classes. And I came up with three elements that I think are key to create a great learning experience, and these three elements are all in the hands of the students, much more than the teacher. The first element is perspective. It's about learning, it's about bringing in different perspectives. Just imagine me walking into a room. Well, I started to teach here at ESCP strategy. I walk into the room, there are 30 people sitting there, average age 22. That makes for 22, uh, 30 perspectives and 660 years of experience. And in front, it's me, one perspective, 41 years of experience. If we don't tap into the perspectives and the experiences of the people into the, in the room, we're going to miss 95% of all the knowledge and skills that are in the room. But you have to be willing to bring in your perspective. Huh? It's not just sitting there, you have to be willing to share your perspective. I've chosen this picture of uh, Nam Joon Paik, a famous video artist, because he, for me, was an embodiment of this. He, was grown, uh, he grew up in the East, in Korea. He moved to the West. Uh, he combined, he studied music, went into the art. He was uh, really interested in philosophy, but used technology. So he was c constantly changing the perspective. He's working with uh, Karl-Heinz Stockhausen, a musician, with John Cage, with Charlotte Moorman, a violinist. So he was constantly changing the perspective, inviting people in to bring in their perspective and created something out of this. Uh, and that's what I think is the fundamental of a good learning experience is that you bring your perspectives in. The second element is bringing your perspective in is only one part, right? The next part is are you willing to listen? Are you willing to build on the perspective of the others? What I very often experience in class is I start to talk. It's quiet, just like this. People listen. I ask a question. A student start to talk. Side conversations start. Huh? That's a, I mean, this is a clear signal saying, oh, that's my fellow student. That's probably not as important. I only listen when the teacher talks. But you're missing out. You're missing out on the perspective he's offering, he or she is offering, right? Because only when we build on these different perspectives, that's when things happen. But you have to listen. Huh? And of course, there are bad ideas, there are bad remarks, but even bad ideas can spark good ideas. It's the mutual exchange that's going to make learning happen. I chose a picture of Josef Beuys. Uh, Josef Beuys was invited to the Venice Art Fair. And I don't know whether he just had no time to prepare a piece of art or whether it was all strategy, but he just sat in a room and had a blackboard, blackboards in front of him. And when people passed by, he invited them to talk. And while he was talking, he sketched on the blackboard. And then the conversation finished and he threw the blackboard on the ground. Venice Art Fair is quite long. You can imagine after a couple of days, the whole room was filled with blackboards and he was sitting on top of the blackboards, constantly throwing blackboards on the ground. The idea was everything they said before will be the ground for what he will then talk with the other people. Huh? It's the foundation. He called that building a social sculpture. So I invite students to build a learning experience like a social sculpture, build on what everybody says. The last piece uh, of, of what I think is key for a good learning experience is emotions. 
I mean, I'm, I'm at a business school, and I don't know why, but people think professionals don't have emotions. I mean, you're just, you, we are, we're taught out of our emotions. Professionals, we're all, I mean, we're rational. We decide, we analyze, it's data. No, I mean, this is, business is life. I mean, there are people, it's all about emotions. I chose a picture of uh, an art piece by Damien Hirst. And I sometimes start my class with showing this uh, piece, and I just ask people, do you like this? And then it's still, ah, oh, yeah, I like it, I don't like it. Then I said, well, he sold it for 12 million, and then that splits the group. Huh? <laughs> people like it or people hate it. That's bullshit, that's marketing, that's not art. And others people, art is in the, in the eye of the beholder. So, so you got the more intellectual minded, others more emotional. But then we turn, I turn the conversation to strategy, but this emotion stays in the room. And that's when we have great conversations about strategy. Because people are emotionally engaged. I mean, it's a very old saying, but tell me and I forget. Show me and I might remember. Engage me and I'll, I'll take it on, I'll learn. So these are the three things. And that's also why I love to be here. I was, I was very, very happy to get invited. I, I, I just joined ECP and I, I got an email, uh, do you want to talk? Because when I learned about this event, I thought this is exactly the event because this is organized by students. Huh? It's organized by students. They bring in their perspective. They invite other people to bring in their perspective. They are ready to build the learning experience together. It's about all of you. It's about all of us. And I hope this is really an emotional event. I mean, this is not an event about statistics and data. This is about ideas worth sharing. So my plea goes to my students. Please take charge of your education. Thank you.